When will SpaceX's Starship launch again? And more importantly, when will we see Starlink version two satellites in orbit? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. So refreshing, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about the latest and greatest news when it comes to Starship as well as Starlink version two satellites. When will we see them up in orbit? So we Starlink users can have better reliability, better speeds, better coverage, better, better, better. <laughs> We're gonna get into all that today. I found an article over on Space News that I thought was really good. But before I get into it, I wanna say a couple of things. Number one, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, throw it a thumbs up. That is very helpful. And subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you enjoy the content, it would really help out a lot. Also, click this little button over here here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately and we will be live tonight. So definitely subscribe and click that notification button so you can join us here. Hang out with my wife and myself. It should be a fun time as it always is on Fridays. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button down there. You can click that, give a dollar or two. That would be fantastic. If not, that's great. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Even better, guys. Also, if you're looking for the exact same type of VPN as well as reliability and speed that I'm currently getting on these live streams, check out Speedify. The awesome folks over there at Speedify gave me a link as well as a promo code. If you use promo code JCristina over on their website, you're going to get 20% off already their discounted price. They have a really great summer special going on right now. I think it's like 70% off or something, something crazy. It is a lot. Also, if you just want to just click on something down below I'll put a link if you click on that link it will automatically give you the 20% off you don't have to play with codes or anything like that so check out the description as well as the pin comment and you guys asked me about this they are back these mugs, there's actually two of them. I think one is about 11 ounces and the other one's like 13 or 14 ounces. There's two different sizes. If you want them, check out my merch over at jcristina.com forward slash shop. So now that all that housekeeping is done, I want to get into this article. It's a little bit lengthy, but it has it's just chock full of great information that's only a day or two old. So this is really good stuff. And it gives us an idea of where things are going, not only with the space program with Elon Musk, but other things that I think are very important to where we go and how long it takes us to get there. What is the time frame? There's been a lot of speculation on Reddit as well as Twitter feeds talking about how the FAA is just going to push back on Elon Musk's Starship and say, you know what, this is going to be postponed indefinitely. We have to conduct all kinds of things and just don't think that you're going to be launching anytime soon. And that is absolutely 100% not the case. And that's what we're going to get into today. So anyways, let's get into this article and I'll give you my commentary on top of it. But most importantly, I want to know what you think. Add your comments down below in the comment area so we can have this discussion. Also, if you want more Starlink content when you're done watching this video, maybe I'll put a link right here. I put together a Starlink specific playlist. There is about, I think 140 or more videos in that playlist, all helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, why. As I always say, this channel is all about the why, not just the how. The why is always the most important thing, right guys? Anyways, let's get into this article. NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson, told the House Committee that SpaceX's truncated Starship test flight was not a major setback in plans to use that vehicle to land astronauts on the moon as soon as 2025. That's pretty aggressive right there. That's only two years away, but we'll get into more of that in just a second. Testifying before the House Science Committee on April 27th, just a couple of days ago, about the agency's fiscal year 2024's budget request, Nelson said SpaceX expects to be ready to make another Starship launch attempt in as little as two months. Quote, 
The explosion, that's not a big downer. The vehicle, which suffered several failed engines, started tumbling a few minutes after liftoff and was destroyed by its in-flight termination system four minutes into what was planned to be a 90-minute suborbital flight. He explained, SpaceX's hardware-rich approach to vehicle development with several starships and super heavy vehicles in production. Quote, that's their modus operandi. They launch and sometimes things go wrong. They figure it out and then go back and they launch once again. That's just how SpaceX works. In comparison to NASA, we talked about this in our last live stream, NASA will work 10 years to launch something, whereas SpaceX will work 10 months and then learn from their mistakes and do it all over again. NASA didn't have the funding to be able to do that. SpaceX does. Quote, as of today, SpaceX is still saying that they think it will take about at least two months to rebuild the launch pad and concurrently about two months to have their second vehicle ready to launch. Meaning that they're going to be working on that launch pad and working on the ship simultaneously, concurrently. So two months is their estimated time schedule as far as being ready to launch, not necessarily being able to launch. We'll get into that. SpaceX's chief executive, Elon Musk, has publicly offered similar schedule. However, the ability for SpaceX to launch again depends not just on the launch pad repairs and assembly of the next vehicle, but also completion of an investigation into the April 20th launch and approval of the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, which issues the launch license for the flight. NASA is closely watching the progress of Starship because it selected that vehicle vehicle as its human landing system or HLS program two years ago. NASA will be using a lunar lander variant of the Starship to carry astronauts to the lunar surface on the Atomus 3 and Atomus 4 missions under awards worth a combined $4 billion. That is a lot for Elon, right? That is a lot. The vehicle will also be eligible to compete for landings on later missions. So this is very interesting because yes, NASA knows that Starship is that ship that's going to take or ferry our people to the moon. And they wanna make sure that it's on schedule and there's no mishaps. So they're really interested in what is going on here time frames, and once again, safety. The FAA is the one that's really going to get involved with this and say yay or nay to the next launch. Once again, we'll get into that in just a second. Asked by the committee chairman, Representative Frank Luca, about the confidence in schedule for up and coming missions, Nelson said he expects Atomus 2 to launch in, quote, the end of 2024 with Atomus 3 following about a year later. A mission manifest published by NASA in March shows Atomus 2 launching in November of 2024 and Atomus 3 in 2025. Nelson said, I'm fairly confident, but there's still a lot of things that have to be done. That same manifest pushed Artemis 4 out from 2027 to September 2028. Nelson said the driving factor for that slip was the development of the exploration upper stage for the Block 1B version of the space launch system built by Boeing. So he's saying that this is not a NASA, this is not a SpaceX problem, this is a Boeing problem, this is why it's being pushed back a year. Quote, some additional funding could help remedy part of that. This is obviously a suggestion because if you throw money at everything, of course, things are gonna go faster, right? Maybe not. Nelson was asked if there was a cut in discretionary spending, which was to be passed, and NASA's budget also to be cut by 22%, would this add additional delays? He replies with this, yes, it would be a disaster. The same would be true, he added, if Congress passed a full year continuing resolution, keeping funding at a fiscal year of 2023 levels, rather than the proposed 7% increase in 2024. Quote, that's not going to be good either. Such cuts, he said, would rule out any effort to move Atomus 4 back to 2027. It would also push out Atomus 5, which will use a lander developed by a second provider back to 2030 or even 2031 without any additional funding. Once again, funding is required. Atomus 5 is currently projected to be launched in 2029. Nelson said he is eager to select a second provider. 
Twitter, subtly criticizing NASA's decision before he joined the agency to select only SpaceX for its HLS, which is its Human Landing System program. A decision driven by the available funding and SpaceX's bid that was far less than its competitors. Keep that in mind. Quote, we don't want to leave all of our eggs in one basket of SpaceX lander. We must have another lander. That was a relief to the committee's ranking member, Zoe Lofgren. Quote, I must say, when I saw the rocket blow up, I thought, thank God there was no people on board. Sometimes the lowest bidder is not always the best choice. The dig, right? The dig, guys, the dig. The lowest bidder, obviously referencing SpaceX. A lot of folks in the government do not like Elon Musk. And that is apparent with their retorts and the way that they respond to certain questions, right? My question that I would ask Representative Lofgren over there is, does she remember the space shuttle Challenger in 1986? Or maybe the space shuttle Columbia in 2003? Does she remember these? These are instances, these are accidents. Matter of fact, if you look them up, it will say on February 1st, 2023, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated as it entered the atmosphere over Texas and Louisiana, killing all seven astronauts on board. It was the second Space Shuttle mission to end in disaster after the loss of the Challenger and all of its crew in 1986. I remember in 1986, I was towards the end of my high school days and it was on on the TV, and that was when there were TVs, not LCD panels, on this massive TV that was on the wall, and we were all watching in 1986 that Challenger go up. It was always one of these things. We are on the Space Coast, right? So we're in South Florida. Whenever there was a space shuttle to be launched, the school would almost shut down, and every room, every classroom would have that up on the screen, and we would watch it. It was very devastating to a lot of people when we actually saw it blow up. It was just unbelievable to know that everyone died on board and it was not obviously a success and the entire shuttle was gone. So the way I look at this is space travel is just simply not easy. If it was, then everyone would do it, right? There will be mistakes and these mistakes will definitely cost great men and great women's lives, sadly but they will. This is inevitable. This is not a sure thing. You are launching people on a rocket that has millions of tons of propellant in it, right? It is not an easy thing to do, but they do it. I remember back in school, we would study all the presidents and the speeches that they made, and we would analyze them to see, you know, where the positives and the negatives were in the speeches and all this kind of thing, right? And I remember the speech from JF Kennedy, and I think they called it, We Choose the Moon or something. That was the name of the speech. And what it said was this, or what he said was this, we choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And what they said at the time was this speech, this moon speech, was a pivotal moment in the space program. It rallied the nation behind the mission. The mission was to get US people to the moon. And this was like the rallying cry around the space program. And it worked. And seven years later, what happened? Apollo 11 happened, right? And we landed on the moon in 1969, the year of my birth. It is an amazing thing when you can rally a people around something positive in comparison to turning them into lemmings around something negative. You know, all being said, the challenges in front of us are definitely not easy. They are hard. And we see that SpaceX, as well as NASA, is going to push forward with this. And the thing that we need to remember is that all countries are also. That includes Russia, as well as China, and so on and so forth. They are all trying to get to the moon for the first time, where we are trying to get there for a second time. And in my personal opinion, as a nation, I think it is very important also for us to be able to get back to the moon and eventually from the moon to Mars and to be the first country to fly a manned mission to Mars and plant our flag on the surface. 
So where do all these details put us when it comes to SpaceX Starlink? A lot of us want to know. In my personal opinion, I believe that we're going to see the SpaceX Starship orbit the Earth probably within about three to four months. After that, maybe a couple of months later, we're going to see the larger versions of Starlink satellites in orbit. Why do I say that? Because they need to make sure that that vehicle is going to make it to orbit and they're not going to have to push the little self-destruct button because that will be a very expensive explosion, not just for the super heavy and the top end fairing, the Starship, but also all of the cargo. And when you have 100, 200 of these Starlink satellite version twos, the big ones up there, that is a lot of money. So I think what's going to happen going forward until we're able to get to that full size version two, there's going to be a lot of version two minis to be launched. We saw another batch of 21 of these version two minis launched just this week. This is going to happen more frequently, I think, going forward. Each week or every other week, we're going to see another 21, another 21, another 21. But bear in mind, guys, bear in mind, it takes sometimes two weeks, sometimes a month for those satellites to get to their operational orbit. That is about 540 to 550 kilometers, right? So it's not going to happen right away. So even though they launched 21 this week, those satellites might not be in operation for another two weeks, maybe a month from now. We don't know. Once again, it depends on where they're trying to go in orbit and how long it takes them to get there. Anyways, guys, I hope you found this fascinating as I have, maybe at least entertaining. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be great. Don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, join us today live. It is Friday. Join us live. That would be awesome. Click this little button over there so you do get that notification. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. If there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.